Because our manifolds are subsets of Euclidean space, or in general we can have uh, manifolds that are inside of manifolds, as we noticed in our previous example of circles inside of a torus, we want to make that notion a little bit more precise. Um, and then what we can do is, even after that, besides just constructing the tangent space, we can also construct something else. This is the set of normal vectors to the vectors in the tangent space. And then together, those two things combined actually span the tangent space of the ambient manifold at that point. So let me make this into a definition. And the precise definitions in the notes, I think it's way more important to understand visually uh, what the definition is. So a subset n inside of a manifold m, so let's say this is a manifold of dimension m, and this is now a subset, so it's not necessarily a manifold right now. Um, but such a subset is called a submanifold of dimension n. And not only this, but a submanifold of m. It's very, very important where the submanifold is living. If and only if, for all points c in n, I can find, so as you might have guessed, we want to find an open neighborhood such that locally this subset looks like a subset of Euclidean space of that same dimension. That's definitely part of the definition, but we also have to include the fact that M is a manifold. And one way to get rid of a lot of potential complications is to just say that there exists an open set U in Rn, sorry, an open set U in Rm, an open set V in Rk, sorry, these are open, let me write this out explicitly, and a diffeomorphism from V intersect M to U satisfying a particular condition, and rather than writing that down precisely, let me draw a picture um, using an example. If I had a torus like this, so here's our manifold M, and let's look at the following lower dimensional manifold in M. Let's say it's just some curve that goes around. So it looks like that, so that's N. And our open set V, let's say in RK, this is going to contain not only parts of N and M around some particular point. I should say these are open neighborhoods of C. Um, so it's an open set. It's going to be hard to draw this, but this is supposed to be a three-dimensional ball in this picture that intersects M and N near the point C. And what we have is a diffeomorphism from the restriction of that open set V to another open subset of Euclidean space. This time, this is going to be two-dimensional because our manifold M here in this picture is two-dimensional. So we have an open subset here. Let's call this, we call this U. And, and let's say this is phi, this is phi of C. Satisfying the very important condition that the submanifold N here lies along some vertical line here. So I didn't have to choose the axis for this to occur. I could have had this somewhere shifted in the Euclidean space and then shifted back so that this happens. I don't really have any loss of generality by assuming that my open subset actually does contain an axis like this. And so here is our image phi n. So our image lies along one of these um, subplanes intersecting u. And that's what a submanifold is, a submanifold of an ambient manifold. You can prove, for example, that an M dimensional manifold is a submanifold of RK using this definition. 
that's actually a little bit trivial because our first definition of a manifold immediately required this condition that we have that manifold lying intersecting with some plane in Euclidean space. Uh, it doesn't matter whether I chose this to be the vertical axis or the horizontal axis for this picture, as long as you're consistent. So more precisely, phi v intersect n lies along some n-dimensional plane inside of Rm. And actually, not only that, but it's contained in U as well. You could maybe say it this way um, to write that um, U containment a little bit more clearly. It equals Rn cross 0 intersect U. So this is what a submanifold is. And with the submanifold, we can define the notion of the normal vectors of the manifold at a particular point. And the way we do that, let's say, in this picture is, if I look at this picture, I know that M has a tangent space. That's going to be a two-dimensional plane at the point C somewhere here. And N is going to be a subspace. The tangent space to N at that point is going to be a subspace of, uh, of that manifold. So let me write this as a claim first, before we even talk about normal vectors, is if N is a submanifold of M, and now we'll write it using this notation to denote the fact that N is a submanifold. Then, and C is a point in N, this implies that the tangent space to C at N is a, subs is a vector subspace of the tangent space at C at M. I won't prove that. I'll leave that as an exercise. A lot of these exercises are not too difficult and just involve following the definitions, really. The definition of a manifold is chosen so that most of these theorems are actually very easy to prove and follow almost immediately for their, from their analogous theorems in the case of Euclidean spaces. So then, using this, we can define if n is a submanifold of m and c is a point in N, we can define the set of normal vectors, which we denote with the Greek letter nu, subscript M to remind ourselves where our manifold N is embedded in, at the point C of the manifold N, is defined to be the set of tangent vectors in M, satisfying the condition that they are perpendicular to every vector in the tangent space of M, of N rather, equals zero for all U in the tangent space of N. So visually, it's not difficult to understand what's going on here. Let me redraw. There's a lot of clutter here, so let me just redraw what this looks like locally. Locally, that curve near C looks maybe something like this. And our manifold, maybe a piece of it, you know, here's part of that donut. It's going in this direction. So we think of this something like that. And the set of normal vectors, let's say at the point C here, I have a tangent plane to M that maybe I'll draw in blue. And I'll try to draw it small so that you can, even though remember this extends in infinitely in all directions. So here I have the tangent plane. It's a two-dimensional plane at, at the point C that's tangent to this surface. Now the tangent space to N is going to be just this line here. You can see that it's parallel to the tangent vector for this line. And the set of normal vectors is going to be the perpendicular component of that. So here this green denotes the normal of M at the point C and N. It's a subspace of TCM, but it's perpendicular to TC 
n. And one of the very important things to note is that this really does depend on m. If I viewed um, the normal, the, this manifold n as a subspace of R3, then it would be a two-dimensional subspace, and it would include this line as well as the line that's perpendicular to the surface of this donut, which in this case would be sticking out of the board. So it highly depends on what, the, uh, what manifold you're in. So rather than giving some explicit examples, I want to illustrate this with a simple visual intuitive example something more concrete, and you can check the calculations explicitly. If I chose the unit circle, for example, and I picked a point x, y on that unit circle, visually you can kind of guess what the tangent space will look like. The tangent space will look something like this, and you can calculate an explicit formula. I do something like that in the notes for uh, an example that's very closely related to this one. And then you can calculate the normal and the normal, if I, I already see I didn't draw this quite well enough, but the normal goes something like this. And you can see that the normal, if I thought of this as sort of like actually a subspace of, of R2, then you can see that it passes through the origin of this circle. And you can show, in fact, that the span of the normal in R2 of the point x, y for S1 is equal to the span of the vector itself, x, y. But remember, viewed as a subspace of t, x, y in R2. And in many cases, the normal, the space of normal vectors is going to um, have a rather simple description if you already have a description of the tangent space of the manifold at that point.